A lot of people are saying that Pixar Animation Studios is struggling. How do you think it might have gone wrong? This is the worst box office opening in 28 years for Pixar. Critics are flagging that this is Pixar's third disappointment in a row. The Disney-owned studio seems to have lost its way. Lightyear and Onward both disappointed at the box office. And now, Elemental, Pixar's latest offering, is shaping up to be another costly misfire. Their most recent movie, Elemental, did not do well during its opening weekend. It did make half a billion dollars in global ticket sales, but the cost of production and marketing was $300 million, and production houses only get 50%, roughly about 50% of the ticket price. So Elemental needs to do at least $600 million at the global box office just to break even. And it's not showing in theaters anymore, so that's not going to happen. The movie before Elemental, Lightyear, that was released in 2022, that movie had the same production and marketing budget, but only did $226 million at the global box office. You may be thinking at this point, that so what if they created two films that did not do well? That just means that the studio is going through a rough time and I completely agree with you. After all, Pixar has this massive archive of really, really good films. But when you look at the information out there, it points to a lot more than just a rough time. It points to bad decisions by Disney executives. It points to changes in the economy, changes in the way people consume content. And by looking at this information, we can understand what happened and we can figure out what companies need to do to adapt in this rapidly changing media landscape. Before I give you the reasons because of which Elemental did not do as well as it should have, I want you guys to know that creativity is not science. Creativity is art. And when you create pieces of art, you have to give your people the right to make mistakes because that's what creativity is. Creativity is the process of embracing failure, learning from your mistakes, constantly improving your content, and eventually you land on something that you can work with. So I always keep that in mind when reviewing pieces of art. Now, Elemental opened to great reviews. Ticket buyers gave it an A rating at exit polls, and it still has a 93% rating on Rotten Tomatoes but for some reason, it failed to resonate with a lot of people. It only made $30 million during the opening weekend, so if you buy one ticket for $15, that roughly translates to about 2 million people buying tickets to watch the movie during those three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. By comparison, one of Pixar's most popular films, Toy Story 4, did $118 million during its opening weekend, and that roughly translates to 8 million people buying tickets to watch the movie in theaters. Why are the opening weekend numbers so important? Because it's a very good indication of how successful the marketing campaign was. After watching a promo or a commercial on the internet or on television, people could not wait and they bought tickets as soon as the movie was released. So if a lot of people are watching the movie in theaters during the opening weekend, that decides how popular the movie will be throughout the length of time it stays in theaters. Now for their part, the creative people at Pixar did everything that they could to create a good film. They had computers set up in three different rooms to provide the computing power for animation and graphics for this film, never been done before. They also redid the story 10 times, but for some reason, the film failed to resonate with a lot of people. One review I read said that some really important things about the characters were mentioned inconsistently, and there were surprises in the story that were not explained well. But more than the story and the movie, there were factors at play that were far outside the control of the creative people at Pixar. For example, the release date of the film. Elemental was released around the same time as the mega blockbuster head Spider-Man, which made $120 million during its opening weekend. Now, this is very, very crucial information. For millennials, it's really not a big deal to buy tickets and watch movies in theaters every week. They work full-time, they don't have a lot of responsibilities, so they can afford to buy tickets. But in this changing economy where money is tight, people are losing jobs, inflation is high, for families, every penny matters. And a lot of families decided to watch Spider-Man, a movie based on established characters, a movie they knew something about, instead of watching an original movie like Elemental in theaters. Another reason, many people within Pixar say that because three Pixar films were released during the pandemic and they went straight to Disney Plus, the streaming platform, completely bypassing theatrical releases, that conditioned the people to expect that Elemental will also be available online very soon. Soon. There were three Pixar releases in a row that went direct to streaming, in part because of, mostly because of COVID. And I think that 
you know, may have created an expectation in the audience that the, they're going to eventually be on streaming and probably quickly, and there wasn't an urgency. So why would a family of four or five people spend 60 or $70 to buy tickets when they can just get a subscription for $7 a month and watch the movie at their own convenience? Pixar did try to fix that. They had a screening of the film at the Cannes Film Festival in France, but the reviews that came out of Cannes were extremely negative. Some people said that this was Pixar's worst movie ever. And that points to the movie being a creative mess. People expect Pixar movies to be family friendly and not just for kids. But Bob Shapek, the former boss of Disney, Disney is of course the company that owns Pixar, he said that animation is not for adults and that may have impacted the way Pixar created this film. I always say that one, our fans and our audiences put their kids to bed at night after watching Pinocchio or Dumbo or Little Mermaid, they're probably not gonna tune into another animated movie. Mm -hmm. they, they want something for them. Adults have the money to buy tickets. And if you fail to attract adults, it's gonna be very difficult for your film to be successful in theaters. Mm -hmm. Another very big reason for Elemental's lackluster performance is that many people say that after John Lasseter was forced to resign in 2017, Lasseter of course is a pioneer in the industry, a founding member of Pixar, and after he was forced to leave, Pixar was not able to replace him and deeply misses his creative output. The loss of Lasseter, was it a blow to the company over time? Look, there's a lot of talent at Pixar. There has been turnover as well, not just John, but there's been other turnover too, and that may have had some impact. And it's not just Lasseter. 50 people, including the director Brad Bird, who directed movies like Ratatouille and The Incredibles, are now working under Lasseter at Skydance Animation. Compounding these problems, Pixar had to lay off 75 people to deal with the losses. Keep in mind that none of this is happening in a vacuum. There are plenty of other films by other production houses that did not do well. And one of the main reasons is COVID-19. The pandemic completely changed the way we consume content. Before the pandemic, only 15% of people in America said that they did not go to theaters. After the pandemic, that number now stands at over 50%. Another reason that a lot of mainstream media does not talk about is that when Pixar was founded in 1995, the kind of technology that they had and the kind of people that they had, no one else had them. But over the last 15 years, we have seen a massive growth in animated movies by different production houses. So the viewer is far more critical because the viewer can compare Pixar's creative output to the creative output of other production houses. I did some research and I found out that the average IMDb rating of Pixar films during the first 14 years of its existence was about 87%. Over the last 14 to 15 years, it came down to about 73%. So that indicates that at least according to the viewer, Pixar movies are not performing as well as they used to. Finally, the biggest reason for Elemental's relative failure is that Disney executives force Pixar to focus more on quantity than on quality in order to have regular content for the streaming platform Disney+. Plus. But I think in our, in our zeal to basically grow our content significantly to serve our, uh, mostly our streaming offerings, we ended up uh, taxing our people way beyond, in terms of their time and their focus, way beyond where they had been. Marvel's a great example of that. They had not been in the TV business at any significant level. Not only did they increase their movie output, but they ended up making a number of television series. And frankly, it diluted focus and attention. So what can companies do to adapt to this rapidly changing media landscape? I would recommend two things. Companies need to find a balance between creating original films and films based on established characters. If you don't create original movies, then you don't get the opportunity to take advantage of a new franchise. And Disney is by far one of the companies that is best situated to take advantage of a new franchise. Based on a new film, they can have a new attraction in one of their theme parks, they can sell merchandise in their stores, they can convert a film into a television series. That's what they did with Mandalorian based on Star Wars. Number two, during these times when the established streams of revenue are completely disrupted, we simply don't know where the money is going to come from. Streaming platforms are currently not profitable. You cannot create films for $300 million and expect it to be successful. You have to keep your costs down so even if the movie does not do well, it is at least able to pay off all of its expenses. 